Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to Cinefix. It is time for another round table. Joining me this week, we've got T. T, how's it going? Great. Awesome. Round table's back. Round yes. table. It never left. It was always here in spirit. Yeah. Now it's actually here as a real table. I'm the only one what using it, actually. I got my notes. <laughs> I know. I always make notes for these and I never bring them. Uh, Dustin, now that you've <laughs> talked, I might as yeah. well introduce you to oh, Dustin hi. McLean. How you how's doing, it going? Man? Good. Awesome. Good and to be here. Josh Dickey, of course. And that's it. That's you all, all we got You Josh. all know Josh. He's, you all know Josh. <laughs> My uh, turn's coming. Yeah, exactly. There's bound to be a lower third down there somewhere that says <laughs> entertainment editor for Mashable. Josh, Josh L. Dickey. That's me, and I'm that's so you. glad to be here. honored to be here. Well, good. I'm and glad. humbled. I feel like at least one of us should be honored to be here at any mm. given roundtable. Um, so no what are we more than one, though. No more than one. No, that just gets, that's just gauche. Um, so what are we talking about this week? One of the reasons I wanted to talk to bring up this topic is Magnificent Seven came out this weekend, mm -hmm. and I like westerns. I just like westerns, mm -hmm. and I would like more westerns. Yep. Western is a genre that has been attempting a comeback. I, I think, and, and that's that, that can be the first thing that we talk about here. Uh, do we think uh, that westerns as a genre are currently back? Because they sort of went away for a little while. Hmm, I don't know if they're fully back yet. But I'm oh, with yeah. you on that they, yeah. they should be. U ultimately, yeah. that's what we're talking about yeah. today. We're going to talk about genres that need to make a comeback. Uh, so as a starting off point, let's, let's see if we can figure out if, if our, our Westerns back. They're back-ish. I don't know if they're going to stay around based on how Magnificent Seven performed. Uh, right. Or didn't perform, as the case may be. But I would say they're back-ish. I love a good Western. I think, you know, we've had sort of like stages of Westerns. We had like the mid-90s Westerns with stuff like Young Guns yeah. and, you know, Unforgiven well, and stuff like that. Tombstone. Tombstone. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, now I think Circa, Django Unchained, we started to have a resurgence. I mean, right now, Ethan Hawke is in two Westerns. Mm -hmm. He's in Mag 7 and he's in, in The Valley of Violence, Valley of, I, I yeah. believe it's called. I think that one's out in October. I've seen both. So, I mean... Just for that alone, to have like one guy who's in two westerns, I I feel like that's that safe. That settles so they're, it. They're westerns are bad. But one I don't know if they'll in ever. Multiple westerns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we had a couple false starts um, with you know like a True Grit. I loved that was awesome. Mm -hmm. So that helps solidify that it's coming back. Yeah. But then a movie I actually really enjoyed, but I think everybody hated was um, was it Cowboys and Aliens. I was going to say Ghostbusters. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, that also. I have a tendency um, to enjoy movies that yeah. nobody else does, but that's fine. but I totally get like. You know, that just could have been more a nail in the coffin the other way of like, yeah. no Westerns. Yeah, I think there's been sort of like reimaginings of the genre, just not like true Westerns like Mag 7. Right. Well, that was going to be my beat. It was about how <laughs> <laughs> what is really a Western versus what's not really a Western. Yeah. Because there are a lot of movies out there that kind of you could argue are Western. Right. Yeah. Just like we argued in here that there were superheroes that weren't really superheroes. Yeah. There are definitely movies out there that are Westerns that... that don't have cowboys right. and horses and um, you could argue Star Wars towns. is a western. You know, I like, think even Guardians of the Galaxy is a little bit of yeah. a western, and it really is more about the the scope and the characters and the storylines mm -hmm. of you know being on the frontier uh, where there's, there's there's rough men and rougher women and right. you know <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, and so. When we talk about westerns, we talk about you know movies that take place in the American West from 1820 to 1860. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like that. That is going to just fade with time. I mean, we're yeah. going to forget about that era, and some other era will seem equally as exotic yeah. to us uh, for for the cinema. But I think that there is a spirit of the western that really never has gone away. Firefly and Serenity is one of my Absolutely. favorite westerns. Yeah. <laughs> in a way, maybe science fiction sort of has taken over yeah. that whole genre. Yeah. And a lot of what science fiction is, is, is going off into the great beyond. And, and there's a certain kind right. of person that is drawn to that sort of an adventure. And, uh, and those people are, are really the characters who populate westerns as we know them. So uh, all that to say, westerns are back-ish, mm -hmm. but partially because they never really left, is what we just decided. Yeah. yeah, that's a real nice non-answer. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And we've broadened our description of what is a Western, the, I think. Yeah, the point is we decided nothing. <laughs> I think is the, the <laughs> in conclusion, we all, inconclusive. We all like them. Let's, have another, all, let's have another meeting. We will get <laughs> another meeting. Yeah, we'll get something on the books early next week. Um, so, uh, so, what other genres uh, that aren't currently sort of in vogue do we, do we want to see have a resurgence? Well, just because I saw this movie yesterday, mockumentaries, uh, you know, we've got mascots coming to Netflix very uh -huh. soon. 
And those were very much in vogue for a while, but it seems like we only get maybe one a year, if that. I think the most recent one I can remember prior to this is what we do in the shadows, which I loved. Yeah. I feel like when done well, a mock documentary is hilarious. I mean, going all the way back to This is Spinal Tap, there's some really great ones. And I guess we get a little taste of that with documentary now, you know, that's sort of like the TV yeah. crack at it. But I do love a good mockumentary. I just don't think that they are experiencing the same popularity they had earlier on in Christopher Guest's yeah. career. Where they've maybe always kind of just been on the fringes though, right? Like, it, I feel like they've never quite gone away. They've just always been that once a year or... Hey. Not even once a year. I mean, yeah, that even less. seems too frequent. But yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's just because like, I hang out with people who are like-minded right. and have the same sense of humor. So it always seems like it's a bigger event than it is when there's like a best in show or yeah. a mighty win coming out. I wonder if television didn't just sort of kill it though. With The Office Could be. Yeah. and with, uh, what, what, what else Parks is that? Parks and, and Rec. Yeah. Yeah, Modern that, Family. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, who's Which, documenting these I have, people? I have, yeah. Yeah, I have never <laughs> That's the gone for this. There's, <laughs> there's literally no explanation of why they talk to the camera in that. And like pretty much every day, two to five times a day, they yeah. sit down in front of the camera yeah. and talk about what Unless the, it's going some on like sort of, sort of classical Greek tragedy sort of like, we're just going to talk <laughs> right. to the audience for a minute. Don't give them that much credit. I, I want to give them <laughs> something because I don't mind the show. But for mockumentaries, though, like they're so execution based, you know. Like I, I think the only ones that are worth talking about are the ones that are really good. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like other genres can sort of there's there's a bigger margin for error. Yeah, you know? it's also um, part of the execution is that it's maybe not so by the book. It's not like you just write a script and you do this. It's so performance based because mm -hmm. most of those yeah. are like pretty much improvised. You Mine's know, improv. they're outlined and then they improvise. So what I like about Mascots um, is that it looks like some of Christopher Guest's like usual players plus yeah. a handful of new ones. So yeah. I'm like, maybe it is a, sort of a revival of let's get some fresh blood in here that can carry on this tradition yeah. of these great improvised mm -hmm. movies. There's just so many characters and because he does that every <laughs> movie, it's just yeah. like, it's like, no, I'll take the same people from the last one, yep. and add then four add more. A bunch. And it's like, okay, well now I've got 16 people, so I gotta add four, now there's yeah. 20 people in this one. What, what else we got? What I got a good one for you. Lay it on. We're going to okay. do this as a social okay. experiment before Great. I lay into it. What is, your, what, you, what is your favorite comedy of all time? Funniest comedy. Ooh, jeez, Ooh, no. that's tough. Think of your funniest. Just think what else. It doesn't have to be your favorite, but just like an iconic comedy that like sort of defines. Half Baked. All right. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I'm going to go Three Amigos. Okay, Ooh. that's good. This is a weird choice, but I... Groundhog Day, I, I always come back to. It's not All a right. good choice. It's so yours kind of fits. These two, not so much. You guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sit I won, you guys. Uh, it seems uh. to me that comedy, and this is, and, I'm, and I blame Judd Apatow for this, and uh -huh. the whole Seth Rogen J Judd Apatow movement. Spoof comedies yeah. used to be. Constant. We would get yeah. all the best comedies. Airplane. Oh yeah. Both Hot Shots and movies. Hot Shots Part Two. Hot Shots, Leslie right. Nielsen. Spy. Hot yes. Shots Part Two is in the same conversation with Godfather Part Two, as far as I'm concerned. In yeah. terms of like sequels that are probably better than the yeah. first one. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Comedy has gone so far out of that lane and into like raunch, and look how look what terrible garbage humans we are, mm -hmm. and like. You know, I get it. Uh, the pathos comedy is like really cool right now, and I think I, mm -hmm. I, again, I completely blame Apatow, who I think is good and has only done good for the world. But <laughs> what has happened to our spoof comedies? Have you seen so Angie's fun. Rebecca, though? It, by the way, I've been telling everybody, dude, if you this is Police Squad, like a hundred percent, yes. Mm -hmm. If somebody writes and makes a really great spoof comedy right now, it would feel so fresh, yeah. and like well, people would be like, "Oh my god, I remember what that was like." The, the last, last great one I can remember is Super Troopers. Yeah, yeah. Even is point. that one even a spoof though? I feel like it's a spoof of cop. It's, it's spoof. not spoofing a spoof specific cop movie, shows, yeah. but cop shows yeah. and cop movies. Yeah, but uh, Spaceballs was Watch another out. one that I was thinking about. Maybe Mel Brooks maybe was, saying. was Mel Brooks was the, the king. Of and the the Zuckers and but where where it really got ruined was the the factory uh, of. Yes. Sp Spoof movies that was coming out—the date movie, the epic mm -hmm. movie. Yes, the, yes, that's, that's right. That's yeah, they went down. I, I and those scary are the same. Movie. The same two. Well, scary movie wasn't bad. All scary movie was actually all right. That was, that was subsequent the scary movies for all were those terrible. other ones, though, yeah. where they and, just started calling it blank movie. And it was the same two guys. It was it was the, there was two two guys that directed all of those mm -hmm. movies. But yeah, no, I and the last the last great one I think is actually not another teen movie. Which flies under yeah. the radar, I think, because you sort of lump it in with right. superhero date movie, movie, date movie, epic movie, whatever, because it has that nondescript title. But it's yeah. legit great. It's yep. really fun. I'm with you on that one. Let me throw one more out there as yeah. a subgenre to this, because this one's big for me. Started in 1965 with the, magnif the Magnificent Men and their flying machines and The Great Race. 
the Wacky Race yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> How long has it been yeah. since we had a Wacky Race movie? Yeah. Well, they, the they remade uh, It's a Mad, 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 it's a mad, mad yes, World that. not too long ago. And it was just but then we've got Cannonball Run, yeah. we've got the Herbie movies. I would say mm. even Breaking Away is a bit of yeah. a Wacky Race movie because they've, you know, you know the what, end of that movie. You know what I think, honestly, is the closest that we've gotten, though, is the Oceans movies. Because there's something about yeah. those Wacky Race movies that's like all the biggest stars get yep. together and mm. they're just having fun. They're just yeah. having fun. And I think that, I think the Oceans movies is pretty mm. much the But in Oceans, they're all coming together. This is where they're all competing against yeah. one another. Yeah. 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 What's the like, big one? I, I was, I was Burt, Burt Reynolds with my, <laughs> to my buddies Dom DeLuise in the orange bomber jackets <laughs> and the white pants for Halloween one year. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, like, yeah, Cannonball Run's great. I would love to have those, those... Somebody just needs to write a screwball, wacky yeah. race movie. Yeah. Well, the screwball comedy, too, is, is one that, that one was that came, that came to mind for me as yeah. well. Uh, anything outside of comedies? What else What else do we got? Um, I was thinking about this, maybe, and correct me if maybe I'm just totally wrong and I'm forgetting all of the great ones, which could be <laughs> the case, but like a, be very short a very um, straight-up film noir. Like, That's on my sheet. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. T's got it. So yeah. I'm in the right lane. So it's like, I feel like we've had Sin City, but it's like a very stylized. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. um, and then there was Gangster Squad, which like, I thought was really cool. Like, a, a good attempt. It was, it no, was, hated it. they were or, leaning that way. But I'm saying yeah. like, yeah. let's get a, let's get some good ones going here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, let's do it. The uh, Brick. That it, was, I didn't see that. That was it, it's, it's, it's Ryan Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the little sheet here, Brick. Brick is, is, is uh, Ryan Johnson's uh, That was how he first movie. kind of came yeah. across Jay Gore and then wanted mm. to put him in Looper. Um, okay. You hated that movie so You hated it? Looper I or thought, Brick? A little from Columbia. Both from of them. Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> but Brick was a lot of fun because Looper. it was straight, like they even talked, like they even talked like Sam Spade talked back huh. in the day. You yeah. know, it was. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I agree. I feel like I didn't really. Brick didn't click for me, but mm. I still appreciated what they were trying to do there. Yeah. And that I would rather watch a movie that doesn't work, but is at least interesting than something that's, you know, paint by numbers. So, and I say that constantly. So I really would love to see more people take a crack at the classic film noir. I mean, Big Lebowski is a film, film noir, but right. it's not the classic one, you know, with the sort of, you know, dark lighting and all that kind of stuff. So I, I would love to see more attempts at that. I thought Hell or High Water sort of veered into that a little bit too, a little bit. There was yeah. something noirish about it, mm -hmm. almost well, as just, much as there was Western. Just the 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 straight ahead gumshoe kind of kind of mm -hmm. story. That's also that's not also an action movie, or it's not mm -hmm. you know it, it's not dressed up as, as something else, you know, because it's just like the detective, the femme fatale, the heavy. Uh, just simple, straight ahead, old school detective stories. Just to be the nag here, I would put this one in the category that I don't want to see them make more of these. You oh, really? these don't need to I, come back. I don't need, uh, again, and some of the, my favorite movies are noir movies, and my favorite TV show of all time is a noir TV show. It's Veronica Mars, mm -hmm. as, as a modern noir. But I just feel like when you are trying to, it's an affectation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has become an affectation in the way that black and white is an affectation, sure. and those things all sort of work together and make me go, ah. Yeah, just, the, yeah, the black and white around. is, is yeah, such an obvious choice that yeah, they it's don't hard need to be black and white. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think they <laughs> no, need to no, be black and white at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the other genres that we talked a lot about that needs to come back is just sort of, uh, sort of dovetailing with with the noir is the uh, erotic thriller. I say it all the time. <laughs> I, I love a thriller, especially yes. a sexual thriller. Yeah, <laughs> and we're talking about like the glory days of Fatal Attraction and Basic Instinct mm -hmm. and like the early the crying to, game, the early to mid '90s, uh, like. Hypersexualized <laughs> thriller. Michael Douglas from 1989 <laughs> to 1994 mm -hmm. is what we're talking about. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to me that those movies ever went away. Yeah. yeah. What made them go away? I don't uh, know. They kind of do them now, but they're very much B movies. Yeah. Like, you know, we had that last piece of shit from Screen Gems that's still in theaters now. Um, uh, when the bow when the breaks, bow breaks. Yeah. and you know, I remember the last one I actually tried to see in theaters was that Jennifer Lopez garbage the boy next door. <laughs> it's like that's what we get yeah. now. Like whatever happened to a well-made sexual thriller? Yeah, not to drag TV into it again, but sort of, you know, the night of was a li well, at least the beginning of the night of seemed that way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Didn't, I didn't catch that Then it turned one. into a prison drama and I got very sad. Yeah, I, I didn't make it all the way through the night. Yeah. I, I was, the night was one of those shows that I'm like, oh no, this is great. Yeah. I'm done with it though. Yeah, I've had that <laughs> happen many, many times. This is objectively a really good show. I'm not yeah, going there with you. I don't see why there's no like, like social norm reason for them no. to have... 
I think we have gotten more uptight as a society, though, as years have gone on. I mean, yeah. it's weird because it's kind of like pulling in both directions where you'll go on Instagram and there's just like naked women. But at the same time, in our movies, it seems like the MPAA is more like <gasps> clutching their pearls well, than ever. I mean, they so. were always rated R, though. I think I've got it. He's got it, everybody. Hang on He's a second. Got it. It's porn. <laughs> Porn, porn killed the erotic thriller. It's, it's like, too easy to get porn. But they had yeah. porn in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> you know, there's anything you see in a movie theater, you're gonna be like, uh huh. Well, but there's thrillers yeah. that have sexual scenes. Yeah. That's not what you're talking about. You're talking about like an, like yeah, a full I mean, blown. You look at, you look at, at fatal attraction. Fatal attraction. Yeah. Fatal attraction is a movie about a guy who is unfaithful and unfaithful. Was it, it was the same director as both Adrian Lin, right? I believe. Mm -hmm. But it's it's about a guy who's un literally sex gets him in trouble and it becomes right. deadly. Mm -hmm. Does Gone right? Girl count in that sort of? Gone kind Girl of might. Yeah. Sure. I don't know how thriller. It, I, that one just feels like it was built on the twist and is sort mm -hmm. of like it's reverse thriller, engineered. Yeah. Where these movies still exist is is Obsessed, uh, The Perfect Guy. Mm -hmm. it, Morris Chestnut has been doing one Hand here. Rocks the yeah. Cradle. Yeah. One. Yeah. Well, that's when the bow breaks is they just remade. That's it's, right. That's right. more or less what what that one is. But I like for those to come back uh, like more mainstream, so that our biggest stars are doing them again. Like Michael Douglas was huge, and he was doing three of those movies a year. <laughs> his, his stardom was huge. Right? Yeah. His, yeah, yeah, and every. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> uh, every uh, yeah, yeah. every big star had like Bruce Willis had yep. had Color, Color of Night, Night, which was garbage, yeah. but they were Horrible. still doing it. Unless know? we forget Jade. I think maybe a genre can't officially be back. It can't be considered to be back until we're getting bad versions of that genre. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like it's so it's so prevalent that we're getting bad half-assed versions along That's with good all ones. That's we're getting though. the sexual thriller. We're yeah. only getting the bad ones. So I guess it's well, back in that sense. Superhero genres right? back. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That that segues us nicely into the second part of this conversation. Are there any it's genres the most here it's ever that been. need to go away? Well, that's mm. my obvious answer, but uh, I know I'm genre. in. I, I know I'm in the minority that on that. It's like it's, so, if a genre is officially back and ready to start petering out when we're getting like equal number of bad versions of them, then... I the do have one that I wouldn't mm. mind seeing uh, go away, and that's the boxing movie. I love a, oh. a, a pretty <laughs> good, good boxing movie. You just could not be more right. But it seems like every year we get two that are the exact same as every other boxing movie. Mm -hmm. Just stop making boxing movies. The, the exception being Creed. Which Creed I is an exception, but that was Creed. the first good boxing movie in like 10 years. Yeah. The Fighter was pretty good. The Fighter went bad. When boxing movies came on in the, in the late 70s, boxing was a super popular sport because you had super popular boxers. Mm -hmm. Now boxing is so corrupt and so watered down and scattered yeah. all over the world. And, and name the best boxer in the world. It's it's Floyd Mayweather and he's a horrible human being. Yeah. That and he may not. Is he going to fight again? Yeah, he'll, I don't know. he'll, he'll probably fight he his wife again. <laughs> hey oh You're absolutely right. The boxing movies, why we keep getting them. Why when you're Jake Gyllenhaal and you're like, I've got, okay, I've got eight months to make yeah. a movie. I've got an idea. Yeah. No one's making boxing movies. Yeah. Like, Come on, Jake. So yeah, I mean, that there. was a fine movie, but it wasn't anything interesting or special. Right. I mean, it's Antoine Fuqua, so no surprise there. But... You know, I just feel like these uh, mediocre boxing movies, do we really need to keep no. doing them? I think the family animated tent pole doesn't need to go away, but it desperately needs to pivot into something. something. Like Storks being the perfect example mm -hmm. of a film that's perfectly nice and people liked it yeah. and it's probably gonna make money for the studio, but it just looks like all the other, they all look the same now. They're yeah. all the same characters and the same beats. At least trolls and sing are like, oh, let's put some music in these, like mm -hmm. something new. I think the last one I saw was Angry Birds, which again, <laughs> nothing wrong with it. They, I actually heard, I actually heard good things about that, it's not but bad. mostly it's like, you know, what's not total garbage? Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Our expectations have sort of yeah. just become down here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when Toy Story came out and everybody's like, oh my god, yeah. like it, it just changed animation forever. Right. That moment is coming. It has to be coming. I almost wonder if it could be. The Lion King, in which case there will be no well, human elements whatsoever, and suddenly the animated the animators are going to be like, "Oh, yeah. we're not going to make them look like cartoons anymore. We're just going to make them look real." Yeah, that's yeah. what that's what I was I was going to ask about this. Like, where does the Jungle Book fit into this? That seems to be a place that they could turn. Well, I think what will probably happen is we will bridge the Uncanny Valley. 
Yeah, and, it's already and, happening. And we will all be surprised when we go home and our dogs don't actually talk to right. us. Right. Well, but it's, it's already there with animals. The animals in Jungle Book yeah. looked great. Yeah. There was not anything to be desired there. Whereas with like, you know, other than it was kind of creepy to see that bear talking. But this is the first movie I can think of that didn't make me go like, uh, CGI yeah. animals. I'm like, right. wow, they look real. They look real. They, and, and I think next up is humans who still don't quite look right. Yeah. I thought Even you were going to say humans who bark, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have dogs doing the mocap right. and <laughs> boys or or human characters. The human character. Right. <laughs> Now that's the twist I was talking about. There we go. I see where you're going. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but I but go I but yeah, so I think animation has to pivot right now because yeah. if it, it's just getting very boring. Anything else needs to come back? Did we did we cover everything that was on our all of our sheets? I know we doubled I up on so. yeah. Monty Python movies. Let's bring those back. Let's bring those back. If that means uh, you know, how do how do we make people young and in their primes <laughs> again? Yeah. <laughs> Figure that out. That could answer our, our Zucker and Abrams problem. Oh, they'll be animated. Happen. Motion captured animals. There, there's your answer. <laughs> they'll be the actual next. pythons. Yeah, they'll be actual yes. pythons. It'll be perfect. It's foolproof. I don't see how. A that bunch won't of work. pythons all named, named Monty. Monty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. That's what we think about genres in general. Which ones need to come back? Which ones need to go away? Let us know in the comments down below. What is your uh, favorite genre not currently in vogue? What do you want to see more of? Let us know. Click like and subscribe. Stick around, Cinefix, for more movie stuff. We'll see you guys next time.